Hey, what's up, fiber folks? Welcome back or welcome to High Fiber Knits. My name is Emily, and today I have another podcast episode for you. Today I have three finished objects, three new works in progress, and a fourth whip that is, you know, third time's a charm. I'm casting it on for the third time now and some yarn pantry updates to share with you. And we're kind of starting fresh with the whole new batch of whips. So let's get into it. My first finished object is what I am wearing and it is my blouse number one by My Favorite Things Knitwear. Now I cast this on a little bit before I started my Nata dress. And so before I started my nat address, I had completed the yoke on this as well as most of, or about half of the stock net body. So once I finished my nat address test knit for the knitwear, I knew my priority was getting this done. And it went quite quickly, I do have to say, once I sat down and committed to only working on this until it was completed. I knit the size large for myself and if you're interested in more specifics on my measurements you can find those at the very bottom of the description box. Uh, so I just knit the size that was recommended for myself um, and my measurements in the pattern and I used the recommended yarn for the pattern as well. This is knitting for olive pure silk in the colorway cream but what I found surprising was that I had to go down from the five millimeter needle recommended in the pattern to a four millimeter needle in order to get gauge. I had knit this whole yoke on five millimeter needles and I measured before blocking and my gauge was off by one stitch too few. So I think I was at 18 stitches per four inches and the pattern calls for 19. I was one stitch off and I know this yarn grows quite a lot. And so I had to frog the whole yoke, re-knit it on the four millimeter needles. And so I just use four millimeter needles for the entire project, the cast on, the bind off. It's all four millimeter needles. And I'm not sure if that is because I have just become a loose knitter. I think it is because I've become more of a loose knitter, especially as I knit more continental. I'm starting to notice a bit of a trend where I have to drop needle sizes a lot. So um, if you know you're a loose knitter, definitely go down like a few needle sizes on this project. Cause as you can see, it recommends, the pattern recommends negative ease and or like very, very little positive ease. And I still ended up with a few inches of positive ease. I really enjoy the construction of this pattern. I think it is a very flattering fit on a lot of bodies because the wider boat neck sort of draws the eye across the chest and the sleeve seam or like the raglan seam is very, very wide set such that you kind of have this opening effect when you're wearing the garment. And I think it's just a very elegant, very almost like a ballerina-esque sort of look that I really, really, really enjoy. That being said, it was a little bit of an irritating construction to knit because there's a lot of changes in how you're doing the shaping. If you can see, this is different from this, which is different from this, and it changes again at the bottom. So it's, I guess, a little bit of a, it's not really even a compound raglan because you can see here you're only increasing at two points, not four as you would typically for a raglan. So I don't even know what I would call this construction. All I know is that I had to pay really close attention to which sections of the pattern I was reading when because there's several sections of shaping that are highly, highly, highly similar but importantly distinct for <laughs> shaping this this shoulder construction. That being said, this is really the only area where you have anything to pay attention to. Otherwise, the entire body is straight stockinette and the sleeve shaping is quite simple and straightforward. So I did enjoy knitting this pattern, although I wouldn't necessarily say it was a 10 out of 10 as far as 
both like the process of knitting and reading the pattern itself goes. I am a little concerned about the silk and the cream silk specifically, just in terms of the garment getting dirty. I really do love the knitting for all of pure silk. I find it enjoyable to work with. I really like the fabric that it produces. I definitely find silk to be more warming than cooling. I'm, I've got my ceiling fan on and I'm, I'm feeling warm at the moment. Um, but I think in retrospect, I probably would have preferred a fabric that is machine washable, especially for a garment that is a little bit closer fitting to the body and because of the colorway, a little more likely to get a bit dingy or dirty looking. So if I were to knit this again, which I might, I would probably opt for something like a cotton linen blend. I know Paige from the Knitting Page used San Nascarn's Lina, where she used Tin Lina held double to get I think very close to gauge for this pattern and that's a beautiful fabric. It's a machine washable fabric. Um, another yarn that could possibly work is like the Pearl Soho Santalina held double and that is a cotton bamboo and hemp fiber that I think would be very very beautiful very soft on the skin and that is marketed specifically as a machine washable yarn. So I would encourage anybody to, if you're interested in knitting this pattern, just opt for something that is still a drapey fiber, maybe even like a merino silk or a merino linen blend if you want some animal fiber content or like a woolier content in there, um, or just like a straight up cotton linen, sort of like a cell, tensile, bamboo, one of those blends, you still have the drape, but less fuss compared to caring for the 100% silk yarn. Also, more often than not, it's probably going to be a little bit more affordable. Now, on the note of affordability, um, I purchased the exact amount of yarn recommended in the pattern. For my size, the pattern calls for eight balls of yarn, and I used like maybe five meters of my seventh ball of yarn. So I have very close to two whole balls of yarn left over. Just jumping in here to adjust some of my comments, because I did choose to knit my blouse in one color rather than marling two different colors together as the original pattern calls for, that has somewhat affected or reduced my yarn consumption for this project, but the pattern does give recommendations for marling two yarns together. Now for me, that is enough if I wanted to make a silk camisole. I'm not sure how much I want to do that. I could also make a hair kerchief, but that's not going to consume two whole balls of fingering weight yarn. So not 100% sure what's going to happen with that yet. It is past the point where I could return the unused ball to the knitting loft where I purchased it from. Um, so be mindful of that. I think if you're aiming for the size large, purchase the seven balls unless you are shorter in the torso and know you want more of a cropped fit. I did opt for a hip length on this garment for me just so that it is a little bit more workwear appropriate. It's still tuckable but I can also wear it over a pair of high-waisted jeans and I have a couple inches of clearance even when I raise my arms. I'm not sure there's much else to say about this pattern. I do like the sort of bell sleeve. This is not something that I have done before on any garments and it's not something that I would imagine myself doing on a more wooly sweater but I think in the context of this blouse it's a very lovely addition to the silhouette. It sort of adds a little bit more romanticism to the overall kind of vibe that the pattern gives off. And I know my favorite things knitwear is also going to be releasing a blouse number one light, which is meant to be knit in all mohair. And I think that's going to be a lovely pattern as well. 
I do think, however, for this construction to really shine, you're going to want something that has more uh, drapiness or a little more weight to it as opposed to like the the floatiness that you might get from a 100% silk mohair garment. And you're also just going to get a little bit more definition of this really lovely shoulder seam detail that I personally enjoy a lot. So if I had to pick between blouse number one and blouse number one light, I would probably still say blouse number one, just don't knit it in the pure silk. My next finished object is not really an L, but it's also not a W. It's a bit of a loss, not a win, but it's only because I knit it too small for myself. Um, and it is my Ripple Bralette by Jessie Made Designs. And I knit this up on three millimeter needles in the medium size using Pearl Soho's Santalina yarn in the Robin Redbreast colorway, which this is like, this is tomato soup core. If you've not seen any of my fall inspo or fall knitting plan videos, I definitely encourage you to check those out and you'll have a much better understanding of what I mean by tomato soup core, but I really, really love this yarn. The skein was gifted to me by Pearl Soho just to try out. And I think it's one of my favorite plant-based yarns that I have ever used. I think as I previously mentioned, this is a cotton, bamboo, and hemp blend, which means that it has like the drape that you would expect from cotton and bamboo. And it has the sort of soft, slick feeling that you would expect specifically from bamboo. Did I say silk and bamboo? The drape you expect from cotton and bamboo. It's got the smoothness that you would expect from the bamboo specifically, but the hemp just gives it a little bit more of a substantial texture that I really, really enjoyed. This color is just absolutely phenomenal. And you can see that because there's the different fibers worked into the yarn, they all took the dye a little bit differently. So you have a small amount of heathering going on that just adds some nice dimension to the overall fabric. The Ripple Bralette by Jessie Made Designs, it's a fave. Lots of people love this pattern. Lots of people have knit several of this pattern. Um, and you know, my last lip Ripple Bralette that I knit was also too small for me. And I was hoping that this one would come out bigger because the plant fibers tend to stretch a bit more, but I just knit the straps way too short on this one. And to be perfectly honest, I think I will cause more harm than do good by undoing and unpicking the three needle bind off at the back of the straps. So this is probably just going to end up getting gifted to somebody who has a smaller body than I do where, you know, this depth will will work out for them because I was looking at it and when I blocked this I blocked it hanging which is why the rib isn't super nice and open but as I had this hanging and blocking I was like okay that strap depth looks like it should work it looks like it should be okay but then I put it on and it was just way too stretched across the chest and it was coming up too high in the underarm to the point where it was like actively uncomfortable to wear so even if I wanted to just trust the process and let this grow a little bit with wear, it's just unbearable to wear at this, at this current state. And I don't trust myself to do a good enough job of extending the straps. And I don't even know if that would resolve all of the fit issues I have with this because my cast off at the back is also a fit limiting factor in the overall success of this garment. So this one's all user error. I didn't gauge swatch. I should have been a little more careful when it came to doing a loose bind off and making sure my straps were sufficiently long before fastening them with the three needle bind off. And so that's 100% on me. I still love the yarn. I still love the pattern. I do lament the fact that I can't 
wear this because I really, really love the color for my skin tone and for fall. So it's a shame, but it's not a complete and total loss because I really did enjoy using this yarn. And as I said, if I were to knit this again, I would honestly consider going for this yarn and holding it double to get a nice machine washable fabric. My third finished object I am calling a success and I'm really excited to share with you because it is my first like legit color work project and it is my Alpine Bloom hat by Caitlin Hunter who is Boyland Knitworks and just like I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> I am so proud of myself and this project. I worked this up on 3.5 millimeter needles using a DK weight yarn that was gifted to me from Birch and Lily. So my main color, this more dark blue, is called Petrichor, and my light blue colorway, which has all of these delicious speckles, is called Wanderlust. It was really hard for me to decide which color I wanted to be the main color and which I wanted to be the floral motif or the contrast color, which is kind of ironic because I think there's like more of the contrast color as a whole than the air quotes main color in this fabric. Um, but I ultimately thought that the speckled colorway lent itself a little bit better to being the contrast because it does take up more real estate on the hat. I would change a couple of things about this hat if I could, or some reflections on knitting this hat that are important to take into consideration are the yarn choice. The pattern does call for a sport weight yarn, and I used a DK weight or a light DK weight, and it's a super wash, and I'm known to knit loose. So I think my hat's measurements did come out a lot larger than they were supposed to. I think I knit the second largest size that was in the pattern. And I think like, I think it's still, I think the fit is still okay. It's definitely a, a tall, it's definitely a tall hat, but I think like the, the fit itself is kind of still good. Uh, and that's mostly because I put it in the dryer for, 45 minutes. Again, I put my NADA dress in the dryer and that worked like a charm for raising up a little bit of the length that I thought was a bit excessive. And popping this into the dryer also helped to sort of have things hold together. And then I steam blocked it again, just to get everything to lay flat and in the precise shape and size that I wanted. I know a lot of people enjoy steam blocking, but for me, that's a bit more of a like touch up or um, like a during the project sort of check up on how your gauge is doing kind of strategy. I do think it's important to like actually wash your knits once they're done, especially because this is going to my friend who just got engaged over the summer. And so my thinking with this was that this would be like a play on something blue to gift to her as she's doing her wedding planning. She's obviously not going to wear this when she gets married, or I mean, she could, that's up to her at this point. Um, but I thought it would just be a sweet and little sentimental thing to do for her. I did enjoy the process of knitting this pattern. The, all the color work is charted, which I think made it go really fast because I was always like, I can just do the next row, I can just do the next row, or I can like finish the flower. And so I knit this entire hat in maybe three or four sittings. There was one evening where my mom and I watched three Hallmark movies and most of this knitting was done during that evening. And you can see I did try to catch my floats for a little while toward the start of the hat, but I just sort of realized that this is a hat, not a garment. So as long as I leave enough slack in my floats that I'm not scrunching up the fabric, I don't really need to worry so much about snags like you would on 
a color work yoke for a sweater or mittens that you're sticking your fingers through. So uh, you can see towards the top, I was just kind of like, I'm just gonna do what I need to do to get this hat done and to make sure that I'm pleased with the tension in my fabric. I did find the crown a little bit fiddly to do and I did do it on double pointed no, that's a lie. I did it on magic loop, um, but I'm almost wondering if I would have had an easier time with double pointed needles, but also maybe not. Cause as you can see, this hat has six points on the crown where you do decreases and double pointed needles might only really be easier to do if I had four points of decreases unless I used six double pointed needles, which I don't have in this size. So um, from a process point of view, I'd be really curious to know how folks prefer to shape the crowns of their color work hats. I would 100% knit this again. And in fact, I already have a couple ideas for yarns in my pantry that I might use that are not super wash and therefore will not grow as much, are closer to the recommended yarn weight and therefore will allow me to get closer to gauge and sort of fall into my peachy, orangey love affair that I'm having this fall. So I would recommend this pattern. I probably will knit this pattern again. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. And for my first color work project, I am very pleased with this, so. This is the Alpine Bloom by Caitlin Hunter. All right, and let's move on to the works in progress. The first project I wanna share with you is another Manhattan hat, Bulky by Tori Knits NYC. And I'm just kind of cruising through on this. This is going to be a gift for my sister. She has this really lovely like cafe au lait colored coat. Um, it's like a sort of tan brown and so last winter she requested a cream colored hat that I am intending to deliver on quite soon and this project is allowing me to as you can see use up several balls of yarn so up close here's the fabric it is creamy but you can see that there are some like orangey toffee colored speckles in the fabric. And so these are the yarns. These are the yarns that I am using. I have a skein of hand dyed sock yarn. This is from Small Fish Yarns, which is a Canadian hand dyer whose shop is based in Etsy. And I can't really precisely remember the name of this colorway, but I think it was something like smoke and embers or something in embers, coal and embers. I'm, I'm really not sure. Um, but it's basically a warm cream base with all of these orange, all of these orange, dark brown and black and actually highlighter yellow. You can see this one here. There's some highlighter yellow speckles throughout this yarn. I am also using a ball of Sandiscarn Sisu in the colorway cream and a ball of Knit Picks palette in the colorway oyster. So these are the three yarns together and I am really enjoying the, the fabric that these are creating because it doesn't really look like, it doesn't look like a marled fabric. It just kind of looks like a speckled cream, but there's some nice dimension to it and I'm using up some yarns. This was always intended for my sister's hat. This I just had kicking around and I don't really remember why I purchased it at all. And this I actually purchased in December or January with the intention of making myself a little Sophie scarf, but I fell out of love with the idea of doing that. And I think together these are working up really nicely. I do expect to consume most of these balls of yarn and this one because I'm holding two strands of it I might use most of it as well um, but once I see whatever I have left over it'll probably just go into my scrappy blanket um, this one as well because these both have nylon this one probably won't go into the scrappy blanket because it's more liable to felt but 
this is what we're working on so far. I did think that my Manhattan hat that I knit with the Biscott yarns in a bulky weight yarn did have a little bit too loose of a fabric. It's still a beautiful hat. I'm still gonna wear it all, I'm gonna wear it all the time. Um, but I decided to drop down to a five millimeter needle instead of the needle size called for in the pattern, which is a 5.5 millimeter needle. And I think I'll still get enough stretch in this fabric. And I guess the only other note on this pattern is that because I am not concerned, but I am limited by how much fingering weight yarn I have, um, I'm probably going to do the double folded brim Whereas the one I knit for myself, because I had two skeins of the bulky yarn, I did a triply folded brim. So this one will just probably have the one fold. I am undecided if I want to add in those double knitting rows to help the folding stay in place. I think I probably will do it. But what I realized when I did my bulky Manhattan hat for myself was that because I decided to turn my hat inside out for those, for the shaping at the crown to be visible, that changed the way the double knitted fold lines worked. So I might have to see if I need to finesse that at all. I could knit those double folded rows inside out and see what that does. Um, but this is gonna go pretty quickly because it's, it's five millimeter needles. This is like barely an hour's worth of work. Um, but I think it's going to make a really, really pretty hat for my sister. So that's whip number one. Whip number two, I'm going to show to you super, super quickly because you've heard a good amount about it already in its Adam's sock. This is the third time that I've had to cast on this sock because the first time I realized the fabric was too loose because I thought I was using two millimeter needles and it turned out I was using 2.5 five millimeter needles and then I dropped down to 2.25 millimeter needles and I did about 80 stitches I realized that was way too big for Adam's foot when I had him try it on and so here we are two millimeter needles and I'm trying a 72 I'm trying a 72 stitch sock for for Adam now and this colorway is a skein that was gifted to me by Arcane Fiberworks. It is a variegated slash tonal skein of slate gray, icy gray, and some mauves and purples. And I think for Adam, it's just going to be an awesome colorway. And I'm happy to be working in stockinette in the round on the leg for this now, because as you will see, my next two whips which are both sweater whips, are not going to be the easiest to work on while I am on public transit, which is when I do most of my knitting while I am busy with work. So the next whip, the first sweater whip that I wanna share with you is the beginnings of my Eva Eva cardigan by Petite Knit. And it's super curly and there's not much to see because I have just done the shaping at the back neck before picking up for the shoulder stitches. And so, so far so good. I'm really liking the way this line works. I do prefer a chunkier sort of raglan or shoulder shaping detail compared to um, like a single stitch raglan, for example. So I am enjoying the, the substance, the sort of substantialness of of this line and the fabric so far is also quite nice this is like a heathered 100 percent wool yarn i am planning to work this up in knit picks simply wool worsted and you might recall that this was purchased originally to become a moby sweater which i abandoned the idea of because of some of the reviews on the pattern's instructions itself and just my general reluctance to knit cables. And then this was going to become a storm sweater by Petite Knit, but I swatched and I didn't love the way this yarn 
was showing off the texture very much. So I pivoted and you'll see what I've selected for the storm sweater. And I decided that this was going to become my first Eva cardigan. And I say my first Eva cardigan because I do have plans to knit a second one sort of Taylor Swift the cardigan inspired, but that's not going to be for a little while. And so I have a need for cardigans. Right now I have my champagne cardigan, which is heavy gray wool mohair. And I have my traveler's cardigan by Ozetta, which is um, Noro Madara in the colorway Sake. And so that's a gray base and it's all multicolored, which I love. It's an awesome cardigan, but it's got a cropped fit. It doesn't have any buttons. It is a little bit more of a cute cardigan in my opinion. And so my hope for this Eva cardigan is to have like a really earthy, a really rustic, a bit more of an oversized and super cozy looking garment. This is a bit more of a cooler brown than I would prefer at this point in time, but I do think that this is going to be a highly wearable garment and I'll probably just go for like a dark tortoiseshell kind of button with this. And my last work in progress is my storm sweater by Petite Knit. I am planning to do a whole process vlog on this project, but I still think it's important to show some check-ins on the podcast every once in a while. And so I am using Senniscarn Pure Gint in the colorway That Orange Feeling for this project. And I think this is just going to be an epic color for this sweater. And so I am just about done with the back yoke. I have a few more rows of the back yoke with some shaping to do before I can go ahead and pick up the front shoulders. And so this is what things are looking like. And of course this fabric has not been blocked, so it's gonna be a little hard to, to share with you, but I am really, really pleased with how this texture is starting to show up in this fabric compared to how it looked in the swatch with the Knit Picks yarn that I had done. And so, so far, so good. The pattern has been followable. Uh, it has been more mental gymnastics than I've had to do in quite a while, especially with respect to working short rows in pattern. And, I think because this is an all over textured sweater, unless or until I am working in the round and I have much longer rows and the texture repeats are simpler because they're worked in the round instead of flat, this is not going to be good public transit knitting for me at all because if I know myself, um, I will make errors and get frustrated and need to tink back a lot because that is what happened with my cathedral pullover and that was when I was like sitting down and focusing on it. I was getting really frustrated sometimes. So just to make things easier on myself until I'm really comfortable with, bull with this and like cruising in the round on it, it's probably just going to be my like evening knitting and therefore maybe a little bit slower going than if it was just a stockinette body that I could work in the round and not have to worry about as much. As far as the color goes, it's, it's a lot of color. It is a lot of color and <laughs> I, I hope that it's not too much color and I hope that I love it once it's done. I think the fact that it is such a bright color, but it's in a texture is going to help it not feel so overwhelming when I'm wearing it. It's going to be, it's going to have a little bit more movement. It's going to have other things that draw your attention beyond just like orange. And so I have high hopes. I have high hopes for this sweater. The Pure Gint is probably my favorite Sandiscarn yarn that I have worked with so far. I have worked with their 100% alpaca, which is literally just called alpaca with two A's. I've worked with Double Sunday, which I know is kind of like a cult favorite. Like a lot of people really, really like Double Sunday. And 
it makes a beautiful fabric, although I've heard it pills a lot, but I didn't love the experience of knitting with it because I just found it to be a little bit too stretchy and I didn't enjoy the way the plies were spun because it seemed to me like some of the plies were really tightly spun and other of the plies were really loosely spun. And so the yarn just like, it's not that the yarn did this thick and thin thing, but it didn't look like it had the cleanest spin to it to me. Pure Gint is quite similar in the sense that it is quite a stretchy yarn but the plies I think it's just a bit more it's it's about as round as double sunday I wouldn't say it's more round than double sunday but I think it has a little bit more of a loftiness or just like an authentic wooliness to it compared to the double sunday I think the double sunday might be merino wool whereas the Pier Gint is 100% Norwegian wool. And so I wonder if it's just sort of that, that rusticness um, and the loftiness that some rustic yarns have that I am finding more pleasant to work with. That being said, I haven't worn this yarn on my body yet. I know there's that trick where you can sort of put the swatch inside your bra strap against your chest and see how that feels for the day. And I might do that. But I also think that because this sweater is going to have so much positive ease, I can wear something thin underneath it to protect my skin. And I just find that in general, things with more positive ease don't tend to irritate my body as much as more closer fitting items, which makes more sense because there's less friction with the fabric against my body. But yeah, this is the Storm Sweater on its way. I am knitting myself the size large, which is the size that is recommended in the pattern for my bust size. And so we'll see what happens in terms of fit. I did have to go down to a 3.75 millimeter needle to get gauge while working flat. And then I'll probably go back up to the four millimeter needle when I'm working in the round, just so that I have some good consistency in gauge throughout the whole project. But I, I really like this fabric. I think the texture is showing up beautifully. I am, I'm excited about the color. Um, you can see the lighting change, like the white reflecting versus the the orange reflecting, but I think I think it's just gonna be so cool. I've been loving seeing all of the different colorway options that folks have picked for this. And I really love all of the beautiful neutral options, but I was just craving some tomato soup orange. So here we are. So as far as current whips go, I definitely have my work cut out for me, but I think I have a good balance of projects that are mindless and those that require mindfulness. So hopefully, you know, once I'm commuting to and from work, I'll be able to get a good amount of knitting done on some of those easier projects and my weekends and my evenings will be full of very engaging, wonderfully textured knits. And I'm honestly really looking forward to doing more garments for myself because I feel like well, the two major garments that I did over the summer or earlier, like late spring, early summer, um, were both for my nonna. And then I did my Nada dress. That was like the next thing I finished after my cathedral pullover. And that felt like it took a really long time. So I'm kind of looking forward to having a couple of faster moving projects that are for me while still mixing in some really fulfilling gift knitting. I do have some yarn pantry updates that I would love to share with you, but before I share the yarns, I need to tell you where they came from. An absolutely awesome viewer named Jerry reached out to me and she said, I have all of these yarns that fall so neatly into the color inspiration that you shared in your fall knitting inspo video. I know I'm not gonna knit with these, would you be interested in working with any of these yarns? And so I asked her if she would mind sending me some pictures of the yarns. And I was like, this is such a generous offer. And to respect your offer, I wanna make sure that I'm accepting yarns that I actually 
can see myself using. So she was awesome. She sent me those photos. Um, I let her know which yarns I would be interested in. And then we met up downtown just at a coffee shop. And I I gave her just a small gift card for Indigo as a token of my, my thanks. It, in no way, shape or form is anywhere close to the value of these yarns. But it was so pleasant to just chat with her for a little while. And now I have some more gorgeous yarns to share with you. So here they are in a bag. I will take them all out of the bag to talk through with you. The first yarns are a mini skein set from Sweet Georgia. And it is this like decadent, deep brown and sort of burgundy, burgundy set. The mini skein set is called Party of Five. Um, and all of the different colorways, they're things like molasses and they all have sort of like wine or chocolate or confectionery related names. But there's this one more sort of milk chocolate color. There's this deeper brown. You can see they're quite similar. And it sort of just fades into these Merlot, Bordeaux, kind of cran really deep cranberry colors. So these are all mini skein sock yarns very very cute very soft i'm i do prefer a four ply sock yarn over a two ply sock yarn and these are four ply so i do think that these brown ones are probably going to go into my adventurous wrap that i'm planning to knit and that's going to be more of a brown blue green um, mostly green sort of color story and so these are probably going to go into my excavation blanket, or I may hold on to them because Laura Penrose has been, she just released her sweet shop blanket and she's been teasing or she shared in her recent podcast episode, this like knitted quilt pillow looking design that I think would be really really awesome if I did just like a mix of maroons so these are absolutely wonderful will definitely be used although probably not all in the same project she also gave me four balls of the Rosa Pomar Vovo yarn which is just like the Rosa Pomar labels are so awesome I'm obsessed with them this is colorway 10 and it's a very similar looking color to the one that I used for my Nata dress. It is sort of like a dark, like a very dark ochre brown. And in this ball of yarn, let's see, it's 100% wool and each 50 gram ball of yarn is 146 meters. So we are talking about, I think, What would that make this? That would make this a light DK. I think this is a light DK yarn. Um, and so my plan for this is because there's four balls, I think that is going to be enough for a Sophie shawl. But I know the Sophie shawl is knit at a heavier gauge. I think that one's knit at like a worsted or an Aran weight. So my options are to just use these four balls of yarn and use up as much of them as possible. And however big the shawl is, is however big the shawl is. Or I can hold these with the leftovers from my Nada dress to get closer to the gauge of the shawl. What I would then need to decide is what is more important to me, having a bigger shawl and using more yarn up at the same time or having those leftovers from my Nata dress available for probably another whole garment. I could definitely get a Tolsta tee out of what I have left from my Nata dress. I might even be able to get one of these out of what I have left from, actually probably not. Definitely a Tolsta tee, probably the, oh, what's it called? It's on the tip of my tongue. The Helix Pullover by Jessie Made Designs. Tulsa Tea, one of those pullovers I could probably get out of what I have left over from my Nata dress. 
But then the other thing to consider is I knit the whole Nada dress in this really rich, warm brown. Do I have it in me to knit a whole shawl in that color and then another garment in another very similar color? As well as I've got my brown Eva cardigan on the go. I don't know. And so part of me is thinking that I will get the most wear out of a really nice, big, cozy Sophie shawl. I am leaning towards that. I also think that including the Trio One strand, which is linen and cotton and like a cell, will make it a really nice and drapey scarf or shawl. So I might swatch those yarns all together. And if I like the swatch, just go ahead with that plan. Um, but I won't break the yarn so that if I decide I don't like it, I still have as much of this yarn left as possible for making a shawl on its own. Okay, and the final yarns that Jerry gave to me are actually Sonder Yarn Co. yarns, which is absolutely mind-blowing to me. I am like so beyond grateful. And so she gave me two skeins of the Luna base, which is a lace weight blue-faced Lester from Sonder Yarn Co. And this lighter green is in the colorway Habitant. And this darker green is in the colorway Soubois, which I think translates to something like understory. So kind of like the floor of a forest with all like the little greeneries. Um, but these are both warmer toned greens. This one's definitely giving like fall version of the sunny lime colorway that I was really, really obsessed with over the spring. And I'm just really looking forward to working with these yarns because I've never worked with BFL before. It's got this sort of like, it's definitely soft and it's definitely squishy, but it also has this like really satisfying like drag to it as you might expect from like a non superwash merino yarn, for example. So she gave me these two skeins as well as the corresponding mohairs. So this is the Sonder Yarn Co. Halo, which is 72% mohair, 28% silk. And again, this is in the colorway Habitant. So we have the exact match. And then the colorway, I don't know if this one's also called Soubois, because I don't have the ball band for it, but I, I think it probably is because this is a super, super close match. And so, so these are what I have. And now I'm really not sure what these are going to become. Because these are both lace weights, there's 800 meters or 875 yards per 100 gram skein. So I almost wonder if I need to hold these together for their own really lightweight, very open knit sweater. I almost could imagine like a ranunculus in these two yarns held together, although I've never been intrigued to knit a ranunculus before. But then I'm almost also like, I have the exact mohair matches. And if I were to, for example, hold this double, so I have fingering weight, and then hold it with the mohair, like a winter accessory in this color would be super, super delicious. And I think because this is definitely a bit more of a murky, warmer toned green than the sunny lime that I made the cathedral pullover with, I think this is going to be just a much more wearable iteration of that sort of color vibe on me. I definitely think I, I prefer this one over this one, but also like, I just, I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do with these. All I know is that they're totally awesome. I don't think there's enough contrast between these two for any kind of color work. I don't think even stripes would really work for this, but they're just, they're just so nice. The other option is to use both of these in that 
adventurous wrap because they definitely fit in with the green, brown, blue color story that I am going for with that wrap. But again, even if I were to hold this double to match the gauge of the rest of the wrap, there's so much yarn. <laughs> so if you have any ideas for what I could do with these or with these, because again, I think these two held together as well, would make a really gorgeous mohair garment, but I don't know what kind of mohair garment I could make with just two skeins of mohair held together. Struggling. I'm struggling with these ones, but I know they will be used. As I'm looking at everything, I feel like these have to be held together. I don't know. So let me know if you have any thoughts. Please let me know if you have any thoughts. It will be very, very, very much appreciated. The other thing is the tees that I've knit for myself have all been green. So I don't really think I want to knit another green tee. So, so much yarn, so much joy, so many plans, so much inspiration. It's just a lot and I'm so grateful for it. So thank you so much, Jerry, again, for all of these absolutely amazing yarns. I am so grateful and I am so fortunate. So thank you so much. They will definitely become beautiful, beautiful things. And so folks, that is everything that I wanted to share with you today. I feel like I went quite efficiently for having as much to share as I did, but there's definitely going to be more to share as I go through the Storm Sweater and the Eva Cardigan. I'm really, really looking forward to having those garments to wear this fall. Although I think we saw in the news it's going to be quite a warm September, so I still have some time to get these things going and get them wrapped up. And in the meantime, if we do have any cold days, I got plenty of other knits that I could wear, of course. So yeah, that's all. That's all for today. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed seeing all of these things that I had to share with you. And until I get to see y'all again, I am wishing you health and happy knitting. Bye everyone.